So, this is the 1966 Ford F-250 4x4 fire truck bush rescue thing. Um, I've had it for about a year now. I bought it in Tennessee, was in Georgia for a little bit, and then shipped it home to LA. And since then I've gone through it and done quite a bit of work to get it up and running and driving as good as I possibly can at the moment. Now, it's not perfect, but it is a really cool old truck. And I guess I'll just go through it, uh, start at the front and go to the back and just sort of walk you through some of the little details and then I'll, uh, I'll turn it on and let it run and you guys can hear it. And uh, yeah, hopefully one of you guys likes it. I just completely ran out of time. I have 11 cars and I travel for work, so I have no time to work on any of them. So time to sort of uh, thin, thin the herd. Starting at the front, this truck has a huge, thick aluminum bumper. Um, if I had to guess, that's probably quarter inch thick all the way around. It, it's, it is sturdy. I mean, it's a little bit banged up. It was a bash bar for this thing. On top of that, we have a brand new Badland uh, ZXR 12,000. It's just the 12,000 pound winch from Badlands. It's the steel cable. I've never had a single problem with Badlands winches. I know that the people, you know, don't like them necessarily because they're from Harbor Freight, but I've used them on all my, all my Jeeps and trucks and I've never had a single problem with them. So good enough for me. This right here is pretty cool. I'm not sure, let's see who makes it. Federal Signal. This is an old Federal Signal siren and PA system. And it's a little bit dinged up as you can see, but it still works and it's incredibly loud. I'll actually turn that on in a second. And then we have this cool light that sort of uh, goes up and down as well as turns side to side. So it makes like a, hard to see it in the day, but it'll make a cool red, red uh, little light go around. And then tire wise, these were new when I bought them or when I bought this truck. Uh, they are Power Kings. Let's see if I can find a size 750 16s. So those are probably 31, 30, 31 inches tall. Uh, and they are a bit inset in the back. This was probably made for a dually box originally, but again, these four before didn't come in a dually back in 1966. So what I actually have sitting in my yard as well that'll come with this is a set of super wide original style wheels and tires that'll that perfectly fill here. They're like super singles almost off of like a camper special in the mid seventies. And I even have the hubcaps that match and they look incredible on here. Uh, they're just not on at the moment. It's, they're painted white and they match in everything. Now to pop the hood, stick your hand in, there's a little lever between the O and the R in Ford, pull that. That's the first release, then you pop it up. And then over here on the right, there's a little lever. You activate, push that, and your hood pops right open. Under the hood is a 352. You know, I was actually told it was a 390, but I'm just gonna go ahead and Assume it's a 352. There's no way to visually tell the difference between a 352, a 360, and a 390 Ford FE. Only real way that you could do that is if you took a head off or popped a cylinder and measured the bore uh, and the stroke of the engine. So, didn't want to do that. I figured it runs good. I'll just leave it alone. On top is a Holly 4150 style carburetor. Pretty basic. It runs runs great. This is the original. I believe it's brass or copper radiator. Um, still cools it pretty good. It'll get a little bit warm. It could use a shroud for sure. Uh, and maybe just a deep clean, but overall I've never had a problem with it actually overheating. It does have a Carter fuel pump. Uh, it's an electric fuel pump. I didn't try to get the mechanical one running. It had an electric pump when I bought it. So I just went with that theme and just kept the electric pump. It works perfectly fine. Uh, it has an HEI distributor that was on there when I bought it. Again, I've had no problems. I'm not sure who makes that one, um, but no issues. Over here, you can see that is a dual reservoir master cylinder. Uh, these trucks back in the day came with a single pot master cylinder and the one on this truck, I just, I just don't like that idea. You know, you lose one corner of braking and all of a sudden you have no brakes at all. At least this gives you somewhat of a chance at, uh, at still having some brakes if something were to go wrong. I did go ahead and I changed all of the spark plugs and just replaced them with, you know, just regular spark plugs, probably AC Delcos. And then there's Excel uh, uh, plug wires. That's pretty much it for up here. It's relatively stock. One, 
Well, yeah, you'll see some extra wiring and that's because the battery is in the floor on that side and there's a cutoff switch in there. That way you don't accidentally kill the battery when you leave this thing with all the lights and whatnot. Also down here, this is a Dana 44 closed knuckle. This actually came out of a 1967 Ford F-250. And uh, the ones in this truck were a little bit beat up, so I decided to just go ahead and replace them off my other truck and steal them. And these ones are in really good shape. They have no problems. Uh, I believe it is 456 years. I also went ahead and replaced the shocks on all four corners. So those are all brand new and it rides pretty smooth. It's still an old truck, but it rides pretty smooth. And you can see the frame is in really, really good shape. It's really clean. Um, up here, I believe these are just stock Ford locking hubs. And yeah, they are. And then eight lug wheels, of course, because this is an F-250, not a 150. Uh, moving back, we will get to the inside. So on the door here, this is La Veda Fire Protection District. And that is because this truck is from La Veda, Colorado. And that's just a little rural town in, I believe, southeast Colorado. This was like their fire, bush, ambulance, all sort of EMS related calls vehicle. And it can get them pretty much anywhere being that four wheel drive. Inside, again, pretty much stock what you'd find in the era. There is an aftermarket uh, tack that does not work. Everything else does work. Even the, you know, the alternator works, the speedometer works, uh, the, the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge, and then the oil pressure gauge over there that works. And we'll come back over here. So this is the battery kill switch. This is what gives the vehicle power or completely cuts it off so that the key doesn't do anything. Uh, once you flip that on, then you can turn the key and then something will start happening. You can turn the car or the truck on that way. Now these lights are unoperable at the moment. Yeah, they do spin how they're supposed to spin, uh, except they're just not plugged in. So I'm sure that they could work if you just plugged them in and maybe replace the bulb in them. Uh, but I haven't gone that far as to try. Now, the really, really special part about this truck is this lever right here. This is the lever for the overdrive. So this thing has a range splitter uh, style of overdrive, which means that there goes, let's see if I can get it, engine, bell housing, like the normal transmission bell housing. Then you get the gear splitter. So that's right here, and that's what this stick controls. There's high and low, or in and out and neutral. And that is gonna split or double the amount of gearing that this transmission has. Now this is just a four speed non overdrive transmission this I believe is the uh, I don't want to get this wrong. The NP 435. Yes, new process 435 transmission four speed and then a Dana 24 divorced transfer case right here. And it, this is technically the predecessor to the high boy the high boy being a 1967 to 1977 or 76 Ford F 250 four x four. Um, but this did also come with a divorce transfer case, which is pretty sweet. Uh, inside wise floor, the only tiny bit of rust is right here, right on this cab mount, same thing on the other side, and that's it. Otherwise, the floor is perfect. Even down here in these cab corners, there's no rust at all. I mean, it's clean. And it still is utilizing the original gas tank behind the seat here. The seat is not in perfect condition under here. As you can see, it's not terrible, uh, but I just prefer having this little cover on it, it feels pretty good. The clutch and everything do feel okay. They're not perfect. Um, you know, I think it needs to be having an adjustment on where it releases from. Uh, and there's just linkage that you can lengthen and shorten and that it changes that completely. But I haven't spent too much time with that. Again, I just don't have enough time to deal with this project. I have too many other projects going on. The radio is stock from 1966. I don't think that it works. Um, it made us not have power. Again, some of the wiring in here is a little bit funky. It's enough to run and drive and enough to, you know, have all the sirens work uh, and some of the lights work, but that's pretty much it. I haven't tested most of the other wiring, but yeah. Um, this was pretty cool back in the day. This was the door pocket. Uh, it's obviously torn. I have another one of these that'll go with it. Um, I just will install it before I actually sell the vehicle as well. And then this up here on the door panel, they're cracked. They're just plastic. Uh, I do have these as well for both sides, brand new. I just didn't have time to install them yet. So those will also come with the vehicle. All right, moving on. 
here we have all the cabinets in the side. So this, this utility bed was made by Jacobs Equipment in Denver, Colorado. There is a 12-76, so that means that it could have been made in December of 1976. I'm not sure, maybe this truck originally had a different bed in the fire department and then they upgraded it or who knows. Inside here, don't mind all of my random stuff that I have sitting around here, but this is sort of what the inside of these look like. These shelves, you can choose what height you want them to be on and they're all lockable. So there's three cabinets per side and some of them even have lights in them like that. Again, I haven't tested that or tried to figure out wiring on them, but I would imagine that there's no reason that they shouldn't work. Here, normal brake reverse and my license plate down there. It's pretty cool. Unfortunately, that will not be coming with the vehicle. Uh, it's too cool to get rid of. Back here again, keep back 500 feet, La Veda, Colorado, quick response team. Uh, inside, I am storing tires for my Jeep's spare tires as well as a big block Chevy. So uh, if I open this up, you won't really see very much. I'll include a picture of what it looks like behind there. This window is cracked. Uh, unfortunately, it is a very simple shape and it's flat. So I think that getting a replacement for that wouldn't be too difficult. And it's got a huge steel step bar back here or step a bumper, I should say. Uh, this thing is solid. Underneath it is sort of like a, I don't know, I don't want to say a homemade trailer hitch, but probably not something I would really trust to tow trailers. Can if you want. Not my cup of tea with this old truck like this. Up there, those lights, I have just taken them both off, cleaned them, put new light bulbs in them, and gotten the wiring to work. They do work, except that they're just not plugged into anything. So if you hook it straight to ground, they do light up. Um, they're just not plugged into the rest of the emergency light wiring yet. Something I was gonna get around to, never had the chance to, um, would be very simple to literally just run a power wire. It's already grounded, just run a power wire to the emergency lights or to your brake lights to add extra big brake lights up top of the truck. All the way up there, you can sort of see there's one bar on the front and one bar all the way over there on the back. And those were where the gurney was. Uh, the gurney used to literally be strapped to the roof of this thing. Interesting. I don't think that would really work too well today, but you know, who knows? And then again, on this passenger side, we have the spotlight. Again, looks to be good, but doesn't necessarily work. And then the floor over here and under here is the battery. Brand new battery. And then one more thing to note, there is no rear window in this cab. So this sort of gives you options. There should be a window here in a stock truck without the utility bed. What I think that they had was, had it open, you know, no window here and no window here and sort of like a leather thing that was flexible that allowed the truck to flex, but allowed you to talk to the people in the back and communicate and hand things. May not have been that way, that's my assumption. There's not really a channel for a window back here on this utility bed. Um, so that doesn't make as much sense to me, but that's also possible. You know, you never know. Maybe that's how it was. Uh, but that would be pretty simple to solve with some plexiglass or again, just having, it's a flat piece. And this is stock for a 1966 Ford F-250. If you just wanted to close the cab off and leave the utility box sort of exposed, that would be pretty easy. Let's see what else we've got. This door panel does not have the little pocket. Um, you could obviously install one later if you so if you felt so inclined to. In here, just some extra light bulbs and some other stuff. Still in pretty good shape. Engine oil sticker from the factory, kind of cool. And then in here, let's see if I can get it open with one finger. Nothing in there, but it does open. I don't know if the speakers work because I've already gotten the radio to turn on. Therefore, I can't be sure. All right, now that we've 15 minutes into this walk around video that was supposed to be five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up for you. So flip the switch, make sure that it's not in gear, which it is, there we go. And then this to on gets the fuel pump going. It's electric, just gonna go one, two, and then, Fires right up. Well, you didn't slip your finger off the switch like I did, it would have fired right up. And 
they did install a new exhaust under here. Leave my power to the vehicle on. I'm gonna switch my lights on. You're not gonna really be able to see them in the day, but I can uh, I can just show you. Also, this switch does have to be to the on position, which means the fuel pump will run, but that's okay. See the front light right here working? It sort of goes up and down and side to side and whatnot. And then this one spinning around and lights up. The other one on the other side does not function. That is the only one that I'm pretty sure won't function just because that plastic is broken on top and therefore water has gotten into it, but could be pretty easily replaced with one just like on the other side. They're all over eBay. Yeah. I don't want to turn the siren on, there's people around. But you don't have to take my word for it. The siren does work and is incredibly loud best part about old trucks everything is just solid 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 but yeah so hopefully someone out there is interested in this bad boy i really love this truck um i, I wish that i could make time for it but it's sort of been low on my priority list and it's just so cool i think that somebody out there is going to have a blast just ripping this thing around cruising it doing whatever you can do so many things with the bed camper you know whatever you wanted to do so I hope that somebody out there will enjoy this a little bit more than I did, but I'm sad to see it go. So that was it. Um, please uh, bid on it on eBay if you want it, and hopefully this thing goes to a good home. All right, thank you, bye.